Hello and welcome to the Master Mind, Body, and Spirit Show. I'm your host, Matt Belair. Today's guest is the co-founder and chairwoman of Handle Group, an international corporate consulting and life coaching company. Her coaching methodology, the Handle Method, is taught in over 35 universities and institutes of learning around the world, including MIT, Stanford Graduate School of Business, NYU, and the New York City Public School System. She is also the author of Maybe It's You, Cut the Crap, Face Your Fears, Love Your Life, a no-nonsense practical manual that helps readers figure out not just what they want out of life, but how to actually get there. She has spent over 20 years coaching thousands of private and corporate clients, including executives at Vogue, BASF, and AOL. She has been a featured expert in the New York Times, BBC, Forbes, Women's Health, Dr. Oz, and Mary Claire, and she is a regular contributor to Business Week and the Huffington Post. Welcome to the show, Lauren Handel Zander. Thank you very much. It's great to have you on the show. <laughs> you make me want to update my bio. <laughs> there's, so much, there's so much stuff on there. It's like reading. It's like my first podcast of 2019. I was like, okay, get through the words, you know? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But I, it's like, it's, I, I, I even have better examples than those. I'm, I must be getting older and older. That much I know. That's your short version. <laughs> it's very, you know, but I can clean out older ones and get hotter new ones in. I'm gonna do that. Okay. Well, you know, we had a, a brief discussion before we started. I know a little about your work in bio and it is immense and it is great. Okay. Also found out you're a fellow burner, which is always exciting to talk to one of those. Yes. Um, why don't you give us a little bit of background on, on who you are and then like how you got to where you are today and you can kind of go over the highlights as you see fit. Huh. So I would say I am a pioneer, right? I, I have been pioneering. I've been a pioneer in the life coaching, executive coaching industry since the late 90s. Um, actually, I started somewhere, honestly, around 95, and I'm turning 49. So that was a while ago. That was pre-marriage, pre-love, pre like, and in, well in, and then built my company and um, really had a dream, which is what I ultimately teach is people to dream, have big radical dreams, and then how to follow them. And so Lord knows I needed to, if I was going to make everybody else do it. And um, so I did that. And uh, the dream was to impact, you know, that I really, what my big mission was, is no one's teaching real life in education. No one's teaching the hard conversation, the weird truth about how to break into human nature anywhere. As a matter of fact, fucking anywhere, right? No one's talking about it. And whatever they are talking about isn't street smart enough, fast enough to get anyone to truly evolve in a way that I think would make a difference, right? So it isn't that yoga isn't trying, it isn't that meditation isn't trying, it isn't that like everything's doing great work, but when it comes to breaking into a human's inner dialogue and where it comes from and why we're so interesting and why we lie and why we don't pursue our dreams and why we're, um, eating too much, into our vices, like all the crap. That was what I built my life. My life's work is based on breaking into that mainframe and getting people to love themselves, love their lives, have integrity, chase their dreams, and tell the fucking truth. But oompa How am I doing? Sounds amazing. <laughs> that sounds good. How long did <laughs> Leaves me a lot of territory to keep going. Yeah, you know, yes. where, where do you even, so what did you figure out? How the heck do we do that? So it's, it's been awesome because I, I have discovered that there aren't that many things that you need to break into, into your inner dialogue. There's your, there's beliefs and theories. There's your personality traits. Your traits come from your family. Now that comes with packaging and and so much back, like that comes with history, lineage, society, male, female, oh, religion, oh dear, right? So you have beliefs and theories, which I can break. And then you have traits, personality traits, which you can dial, right? You can't break them. 
If you're stubborn, you're stubborn, but you can really work on your stubbornness. If you have a belief, I could never, you know, be a comedian and then you go and be a comedian, you go and do stand up, you broke a belief. So beliefs are breakable. Stubborn needs work, right? So there are beliefs, theories, and traits. Then there are the predominant inner dialogues that are going on that come from your beliefs, theories, and traits. The negative ones are the ones I care about you having an understanding of, which, right? And so really there's chicken, how you squawk and say the world will not take care of you and you can't tell the truth, you can't do that, you can't do it, like, ah, chicken. Brat, I'll do it tomorrow, leave me alone, maybe I won't. Who the fuck are you to ask me to do that? brat. And then your weather reporter. It's always been this way. It'll never change. It is the, a weather reporter generalizing theories that kind of are boring and lame and don't let you get ahead. Men, there are no good men in New York. There, it's never been good for me. I can't change. I'm a morning per, I'm not a morning person. So weather reports. And then that all, that inner dialogue all explains how you're living your life. And so all I can Right. And if I can get you to get the wiring and I could get you to get having dreams, I could rewire your inner dialogue to go with your dreams, actually, instead of what they are going with right now, which are your traits and your fears and some good things, but a lot of lying. That makes oh. sense. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, it makes, well, of course. Um, so, well, where do, where do we even start? So, it's like, there's the root, the root, the thing is, I think that most of you, I was talking to my mom about this yesterday because yeah. um, she wants to transition in her job. And I just tell her, like, what do you, what do you want to do? Like, what do you want to do that, like, breaks the mold from where you are now? Like, so she's ideally, like, she wants to go to a similar job, but she's very smart and kind and humble and like listens to everybody and is so sweet and she wants to help people. She um, was a former alcoholic a long, long time ago, got over that years and years ago and now constantly helps people all the time and has a bigger idea. And I've just explained to her, I was like, you first got to identify that idea and then also get rid of all that programming that says you can't do that. There's no reason why you, you can't do it. You just have to, you have to start to do that. You have to start to think about it. So Absolutely. where does somebody begin? And I looked at some of the coaching program you had and there's like worksheets and, and on all this. And when every 2019, I go through a whole process myself. And I think that that's the biggest piece that people are just not asking these questions and taking the time to go through to figure it out. It, it needs language. You need to write. You need to talk about it. You need, it, it doesn't, it doesn't just, un like the, anyone who knows anything in engineering about anything, any subject, it's because they have language, they have examples, they put themselves into it and through it. So it's exactly what I do, which is get people to talk about how they feel, their dreams, what they, you, your mother literally needs to sit down and write and start to get connected to a vision, right? If you don't have a vision for your vacation, how are you going to fulfill on one, right? It, it's like, oh, I do have a vision for my vacation. Okay, great. How, you know, what do you got? I got this much money and I have this much time and I, what do you love to do, right? So what I do in the method is I ask people all the right questions so that they have to answer the right answers for themselves. And then I teach what's called personal integrity, an ability to keep a promise to yourself. People suck at keeping promises. To, they, you, I, you, you and I can be on time, but if you made a promise to go work out this morning or to get up early and you made it only to yourself, right? Um, or you set it to yourself and you set the alarm, your ability to fuck yourself over is frightening. Your yeah. ability to not fuck over your mother is probably 100% better. With that in mind, I make sure you make your promises not alone. Mm. Right. So you would tell your mom, Hey, are you really into this? Great. Let's do the, let's go through, maybe it's you book and let's do our dreams together and let's have three dreams written by Tuesday. You want to do that mom? Meet at three 30 on the phone. That'll get the job done. Right. So I train people how to rewire their nature into being accountable. Hmm. 
Mm-hmm. That's that's important. You know, it's interesting. Like you even you know you just think about how many people make New Year's resolutions. You know, 2019 is I'm gonna eat good and you know I'm gonna have a six pack or whatever the case is. Or you know, yeah. I was recently had a podcast and and they were asking about ten. I I, I they show they clipped it part of the rant that I had and part of the rant was like basically f bomb the 10x bullshit because everybody's like just looking at acquisition and trying to like skip steps when for me it's like a little bit different where it's like more about a clear vision and it's constant hurdles that's just you just have a vision that compels you to get over those hurdles because it's not easy where the 10x kind of puts in the mind i'm like okay cool i'm gonna do a few things then i'm gonna 10x everything and then i'm gonna have a bunch of material stuff but you still don't know where the hell you're going or what you're doing you know like now, you gotta get to you those assume i know what a 10x is Oh so yeah. Oh, it's, it's, um, I love them. Grant Cardone. It's like this whole thing now in, in entrepreneurship is like 10 X everything. So you take your business and you multiply it by 10. That's the idea. Why? For more to get more okay. <laughs> because we need more. That's why <laughs> just more everything, you know, you know, this. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> um, right, so, fine. yeah. So what I want to ask you, cause there's, I actually kind of want to ask you some bigger questions about the world Please. too. Because I'm, I'm curious about that, but yes. do you want to give like some, some of your like talk about either your book or some of those steps somebody's like 2019 and they're gung-ho they're like you know what i'm gonna go get it like, I, give, them, give them a start okay. if you what if you like reading books it's a and you would do a work and it, it, it's a working brilliant book right it's the cheapest way to understand who i am and what i've done for 20 years and just so you know i wrote the book after proving the theory for 20 years, not before or not in order to prove it. It is literally my best work. Okay. But if you want my favorite thing to sell, that's really a fair price is I did all my coaching sessions. Like I recorded my coaching sessions and it's digitally available. It's called inner you and you can meet, like you literally could get the program lets you meet other people, lets you connect, lets you work. Like it's, it's really my dream come true of people coming together, doing their own homework, connecting with others and actually getting their ass kicked um, to keep promises, post your promises and deal with yourself inside of the method and with buddies. And you know, it, it, it's brilliant. So if you really give a shit about changing your life, actually, not just listening and hoping it just changes you naturally as you drive, um, what you will have to do is do the work, which is you're going to have to write answers, have a vision, and talk about it and really learn how to make commitments that you're scared to make and what that inner dialogue is. All that's available at Handel Group at Inner You. And we, we keep upgrading it. Like It's my favorite thing to upgrade and get better and better at because this is the product. And trust me, this product is being sold in the highest end corporations as how to get as a gift to their people so that they could get happier in their own lives. Right. So this is not a joke as my best work. This is what I've been working towards. There you go. Sounds awesome. Well, I, and I like what you said there too, because even with the podcast, like, you know, when I started doing them, they're longer. My dad's always like, this should be shorter. And I was like, well, if I'm going to talk to this expert, I'm not going to do it in like 10 minutes. I need to let them speak about it. And so with your course, it's like, we can, we can be inspired by the podcast, but if you're going to coach with me or you're going to coach with you or coach with anyone, or you're going to do physical fitness, you got to show up to the gym and you got to yeah. do those things. You could look at like the greatest strength programs or you know six pack abs or whatever but you got to do the work and it's interesting that mental work or spiritual work or life work it's so many people are not doing it and it's the most important work that you can do right you know <laughs> it's so bizarre but i think it's the age of aquarius i think it's coming if we're like it's all been culminating the shit show has been landing us to the age of aquarius right where we all get oh maybe it's us maybe we have to go in and not you know keep building out right yes. and hoping that the out makes us happy in hmm glad we have everything out there but what about inside it hasn't changed anything has it hmm no it's kind of made you feel more disconnected yeah. So I'm like, yes, I agree. So I'm going to give you two examples because you've got types of different people. You've got one column A, and this yeah. is the person, they're just crushing business. They're just making all kinds of money. They're making it rain. They're getting things. They got the great symbols in their driveway and, and all they got is money. It, not all, 
they got lots of money, but they yeah. don't seem to have like happiness. And they kind of feel trapped in this, like, I've got the material thing set, but you're telling me i got to follow my dreams, but then how am I going to go pay for the crap that I have already over here? Because I don't understand how to connect that to money yet. Then you got right. column B, where you got, yeah. like, a single mom. You got, you know, my homies that are working regular jobs. You know, you got you know, your middle class person. You got your person coming out of university or whatever, and they're like, okay. I am listening. How the heck do I do this? Like, where do I, how do I use like law of attraction and woo woo is getting crazy now. I just went to the Mayan heart festival, met incredible people. And also some of it was like, Oh my goodness. It's like, I've been in this game for a long time and I don't know what you're talking about. Like maybe I just haven't developed my abilities to that level yet, which is square possibility. And also the other possibility is like, I don't know where you ground any of that in physical reality. You know, you're, it's so high up in the crown chakra where they're like, also you got to be able to, you know, ground it out here in some sort of physicality. At the Fair same. enough. Know what I mean? Yeah, I certainly do. Uh, yeah. You've been to Burning Man, you know this. So talk about that. <laughs> okay. So, so I don't, I developed what I consider basics like addition, subtraction, algebra for self-help, for self-awareness. And I think that none of it can work without these basics. Because if a person doesn't know how to master or manage how they talk to themselves or why they're talking to themselves about the shit they're talking to themselves, do you know that most people can't even say what they said to themselves in the last hour and a half? Like they don't even like, what do you mean? I said something to myself. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Like your feelings, your mood, the way you look out, the way you understand the world, right? So in my, so I think there isn't enough language or understanding of how to be present in the real world, in normal, not in woo woo land, not on your mat, not while you're meditating, right? I don't give a fuck right? Like that's lovely. I hope you work on that lots, humans. But being present with, you know, in your house, with your kids, with your wife, in the kitchen, while you're doing dishes, while you're being with yourself, that person is the person I need to get my hands on. Like that. Okay. And so then you go, there's these categories. And in that category, there is, do I think inside of every human is their dream come true? Yes. So working class cutie pie has ambition in there too, right? She loves me. Like if, and where's ambition? You go, Lauren, where's ambition? It's in the heart. Where in the heart? It's in what the heart loves. What do you mean what does the heart love? I, what does the heart fucking love, right? It stays up at night doing it. It reads about it. It studies it. It gets jealous of others who are doing it. They, everyone can find in their own heart what they freaking love and wish they could make money at. Guess what, everyone? Someone's making money at that thing or you wouldn't know about it. You wouldn't even be able to be jealous of it, okay? So, so commerce and love come together. They really do. That mother of yours who loves to help and has a background in treatment, right? How much money she could make, what she could do to be helping people and making money as a, you know, a counselor, a coach, a new type of coach, uh, you know, like everyone can connect the thing they love to how to make money at it. And they may need schooling. They may need a plan. Right, so every dream needs a business plan and a set of actions. And I don't care if you just got out of business school, I don't care if you never went to college. Right, I don't need, like you may need education because if your dream is to be, you know, working for an animation company and you love animation, right? Then you're gonna need to know technology. Oh, then you find out you suck at technology. Oh, bummer. Okay, great. Then you're not going to do the technology part, but you want to work for one of those types of companies. So, so there's a breadcrumb trail into being true to yourself that comes from starting out writing your dreams 
And then in my method, you'll see that the dream starts to tell you actions you need to take. And most people actually know what they are or can Google them, right? And what we do at Handel Land is we make you start to just take the right action. So you could be 100 pounds overweight, okay? And then we decide no more sugar or flour after three o'clock. Oh, you could shove it in before three. And then we're gonna do that for a month. And then starting in February, we're gonna go 11. And then we're gonna go not, like whatever it takes for you to get better and better and figure out you can make change and that there's a gradient, not to go too fast up, but that you are, and that you have an accountability partner. The most miraculous thing I have discovered is the more you change your behaviors, the more your whole state of mind changes. What do you mean, Lauren? I mean, everything changes, the way you talk to yourself, the way you feel. So if you go to that man who was the psycho has his Porsches and is disconnected from his heart and what he cares about and the meaning of it all, you break into his inner dialogue and you will find out what he cares about. What does she think? What does he think? What are they going to do? What should I do about it tomorrow? And we're going to find out that they're missing conversations. I don't hear any art. I don't hear any love. I don't hear any sexy time, right? Like I don't hear lots of things, right? Why aren't you caring about those? Where are those dreams? So a person who's got like, so what happens is, is a person is very dominant because I say there's 12 areas of life. And so now you're describing someone who's incredibly dominant in three and is missing the other seven, eight, nine, ten, like wherever we are on the numbers. Now I'll be quiet because I talk too much. That's what you're here for. This is good. I know. It's a little it's, much it's, for my taste. <laughs> well, I, I like that the book is like, cut the crap. You know, <laughs> it's like, that's, that's, that's a part of it. Okay. Well, we're talking a lot about internal dialogue and I think that is so important. So the questions that I have are, how does one develop self-worth and self-love? Because self that's, that's critical. Okay. Um, two, who do you think it is talking to yourself? That's like just an awareness question. Like who is the thing observing the consciousness? Because like what the hell is that all about if you rewind that? Um, Fair, good question. You know, and um, the hell out. That was just start all right, with that. So who's, wait, tell me the first one again because I got distracted by the, other, the next one. The um, first one. The, well, the first one, I actually, this is what I was going to say. I was going to add this one. Um, yes. I thought about how valuable it would be to have an app that projected your internal dialogue. Because I've heard it's like 90% repeated and mostly negative. So You, know, you understand pe people are embarrassed about their inner dialogue. It's oh, like yeah. Me too. <laughs> yeah. People don't want to tell what they just said, right? I remember when I started training my sister in, and my sister's a total truth teller over 10 years ago who I, part, I partnered with in my business. So I had to train her in my process. And she had to confront that when she went for a run, she occasionally visited her very living husband's funeral. She killed him in the, like she would go for a run and she'd be at his funeral. Jeez. Like, <laughs> Like, and then what would she say at the eulogy, right? Like twisted, right? Like, like, so most people will not even confront their own inner dialogue. Mine is a whore, right? She, my, <laughs> my inner dialogue wants to fuck most people, right? Like God forbid, right? Mine's a slut, right? Like, <laughs> right. I, my, my joke is I couldn't make it to the first light without having a sexual fantasy about someone that I shouldn't be having one about. My husband knows, right? It's like a bad <laughs> joke. I'm like, what is up? And my father. So you go, where did it come from? I go epigenetics. You go, what do you mean epigenetics? And I'm like, oh, my father cheated for years, eventually confessed and cleaned it up with my mother. But you're like, what's on your brain? I'm like, oh, my epis. I have mm -hmm. epis. My epis are a little perverted, right? Like, and my, you, right? And then I, so you have your parents' epis. Mm. 
Sorry. And then you have your variation <laughs> of them. Sorry, everyone. I'm sorry. It's actually true. Well, it's, you know, it's good that you brought that up because it's an example of just like how frigged up our minds are, you know, like what is, where is that cycle coming from? We're not like intending to make that cycle happen. Like you're just thinking about perverted crap all the time. You know, I think about perverted crap all the time, you know, it's just our whatever weirdness I'm thinking. I'm like, why the hell am I even thinking that? Um, but then it becomes fascinating because consciousness and intention, that's like who you are, that free will choice so of all of this crap, even though for some reason it's set to frigged up stuff all the time, yeah. your consciousness and intention, you can shift that. So the, well, you can add on to that, but the original question was how do we build self-worth and self-love when our critical internal dialogue is so terrible to ourselves because if you don't have that you're screwed well first of all most unless you get you're in charge of your unless you like a, like spiritually speaking shaktipa an awakening right like a moment of clarity is that there is an inner dialogue and you're either driving it talk managing it shutting it up dealing with it or it has you by the balls. Mm. That is a spiritual awakening. Most people, unless they can hear their inner dialogue, discount their inner dialogue and manage their inner dialogue, let alone pick up the ball and tell it what to go think, have no awareness in my book. Oops, did I really accuse society of being a machine in and of themselves without presence of mind to take over their inner dialogue? So I really am that crazy cause, wake up. But the minute you wake up, you can hear yourself, right? You can hear, wow, that was a perverted thought. The minute you can hear any thought, you can laugh at it. You can send it back to hell. You can act on it, right? Like if you don't have, if you're not present, that, that's the GPS. That thing, and your GPS goes where every day? To hell? Where's your self-worth? Let me be very clear where self-worth lives. It's not so advanced. It's where you respect yourself. Mm. You got out of bed on time. You ate what you wanted to eat. You went to do what you wanted to do. You fucking love yourself. You respect your actions. You live in actions. You go to bed late. You watched five shows on Netflix. You didn't. You lied to your boss about why you were. You didn't get that homework, that thing done to him. Like you go, where self worth? Self worth is a verb. It's an experience of the self. Live action, people. You don't. You don't have self worth. You don't like what you're doing, or what you're saying about what you're doing in there. So you may do the right thing, but in your head, you go, I fucking hate you. Right? And you're like, here it is, boss. And then you're like, I feel sleazy. I'm like, of course you do. You're working for someone you hate, pretending you don't hate them. Does that make you a good person or a, a jerk? Right. <laughs> jerk. Okay, that makes sense. So, so, uh, so worth is a moment to moment experience of do you like yourself right now? Did you say what mm. is true for you right now? Are you going to the gym today? Like, we're not even that advanced, right? We like to exercise. I'm sorry if you think you don't. We like to be creative. I'm sorry if you don't think you do. We like to listen to music. We like to do good work. We like to read books. We like to learn. We like to play with friends. We like to have friends. We like to be social. We like to, like, if you don't know what makes you proud of yourself and you, or you've never developed it, you're depressing. You're depressed. You're hiding. You're having a, another drink. Oh, you're a stoner. Oh, right. Like we're into our vices. We're into food is a vice. Sex is a vice. Porn is a vice. Normal habits are fine. You want one cookie a night? Great. Right. But how many cookies did you eat? How, how overweight are you? All of those things are equal to not being proud of the self. It's a very real answer. Was that good? Did <laughs> yeah. that make that clear? And no, it's it's so good. And what it what it comes back to, I think, is like personal integrity. Like I, I like if you can manage that and have that discipline and that vision and those things, I don't like. I don't know if it fixes it at all. Like, and I don't think that's what you're suggesting. Um, but if you're doing zero, you're definitely gonna keep going down this loop of like 
you kind of feel out of control, but there's this, there's part of you. What do you want to say? I think, I actually think that if a person profoundly gets to their basics, like covers their basics, I don't need you to have like your basics where you think you're sexy, where you think you're being a great person, like your basics that inspire you to be you. You're happy to look in the mirror and you like yourself, right? Actually, I do think from that place, a person can dream a life that is beyond belief. So I do think that home base of self-love, self-respect, self-actualization leads to a potential in a human that is like, you're like, Lauren, are, is this the right answer? And if people get to this right answer, that they could then really have lives that are unprecedented? Yeah, like crazy good, like beyond the eppies. I, I do, I, yeah, so I, I do I, believe in that. Yeah, yeah, I agree too. And I think that it would be very hard to even um, accomplish those dreams if you don't have those because even basically, ah, this is interesting. If you don't have that sorted out, you're just living someone else's dream. You're just, it's like in the materialism of something else that it's not you guiding it. You know, like you're kind of going along, maybe you're smart, you get a good job, get a house and get a lady and all this stuff, but right. something's missing because you didn't, you didn't have that it's foundation of where to aim. You, you know, know what they, you know what people say when they are in that position? No. I, I'm lucky. They feel lucky. Mm. And their, their type of blessed is not the type that they caused it. It's right. the type where they hope they don't lose it. Mm. Hmm. They're scared. Like they have something that they're scared someone could take away. They don't know how they got it because they're not. They're, they're working for it. They're scared about it, right? It's not, I know who I am. I know how I got here. I know the work I do. I, I am present. I hear my inner dialogue. Like I'm not all over the map or going to lose it. Yep. I totally agree with that. So what are the basics then? You cover them a little bit. What are, body. Yep. You got to have your body under like real integrity management. That's mm. your that's your sex, like that's, so your body, so if you're in a marriage, so it depends on where you are, right? So your love life, you have to understand yourself and your love life, you have to understand your career, you have to understand your body, and you have to be taking care of those basics. Family is like next up, because if that's torturous, it'll fuck up all of them, but your basics are those for you, right? So, and body is the best place to learn integrity. What do I mean? You really aren't, see that hand of yours? Oh, that's your hand. That hand is totally connected to that inner dialogue, right? No, really. If that can't take over this, it's lying. So my favorite thing to do, and I mean with an executive, I don't care where I go, if they're at least 10 to 15 pounds overweight, I'm making them go on a diet, not because I give a fuck about the 10 pounds they're fine. It's that I want them to learn how the voice in their head begs for the cookie and how they give it the cookie or how they give it a cocktail, right? So one of the most profound places to learn your inner dialogue is to take away the vices of the body, not because I think you should live without them for the rest of your life. I ain't no monk, right? Or planning to teach anybody to be one right? But I am teaching people how much their monkey brain, like that brain of theirs is driving them nuts. And if you can't take it over in physical reality, you can't take it over anywhere. That's my first lesson with humans is have a vision for your body, right? And take over your inner dialogue with your body for like seriously for six great weeks. I didn't say starve. <laughs> okay. Right. I said, really tell it what to do and do it. Right. This would great work great with meditation. Does that make sense? So I love a person being able to follow their own actual instructions and follow instructions like a crazy motherfucker learning because then they can literally hear their inner dialogue screaming. No, get out of bed. I, I, who's that girl? Why are you doing this? No. Right. Like meet your inner dialogue. Right. Tell it it can't have porn. 
ha, ha, ha. See what it says. <laughs> well, okay. <laughs> I, just, I, just, I, was like, I had it all lined up and then the last sentence was like, okay. Um, it's so important because it, what it reminds me of, of is uh, Dr. Joe Dispenza where he talks about addiction it's when the the mind becomes the body so it's like we don't want to smoke but we start smoking cigarettes we don't want to drink but we take another drink we don't want the cookie but we have the cookie and it's understanding what you're saying is like what are you saying to yourself and that's where for me i think that one of the things where i was lucky and and blessed for was (laughs) having martial arts because i enjoyed it and and part of that was the body and that's the easier the, mastering the body and telling it what to do and making it do things it doesn't want and persevering and going that's what's taught me more about life than anything is like making my body do something it doesn't want to do like i just did the cold plunge you know i give my buddy crap because he did a cold plunge in uh in like california like 15 i was like bro that's like a summer day in canada man <laughs> and so and um you know we went that's in that's january that. 1st in 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 the ocean and it was so cold and um, but the body doesn't want to do it, but it's just interesting, like the lessons that come from that. And so, if we can start at the body, we can see where that's rolling over. And you have to be able to control it because your body's going to continue to show up places where your mind and your consciousness maybe that links into your soul and who you are. Like, my soul wants to do art, but I show up at a cubicle 40, 60 hours a week because I got to go get food. There's going to be a part of like resistance and lack of integrity because the body's like, do you realize how amazing and powerful you are? You can change this reality, but it has to do with you making certain actions. Right. And if you can't do those simple ones, there's no way you can have the courage to do the big ones because you, you haven't like swam off the boat or something. I don't know if that makes any sense. No, no, no. It's, it's literally, that's how I do it. It's a gradient. Like once you learn, it's like I, I have children, right? So once they learn the alphabet, then you can teach them words. Once they learn words, you can teach them sentences, right? So there's a building of concepts. And the first in concept is take over your inner dialogue in a place that you know you're in charge, right? You can't, you could say my career is up to society. I can't get a job, the economy. There's many things you can blame so that you don't have to feel totally accountable. Your hand. Yeah. You can't like, uh, that's you, baby. That's you right there. Right. Right. So learning that relationship is directly your inner dialogue. Taking that over starts you to really understand you could take over everything. So by the time that artist wants to start making art and giving it away as gifts so that people have his art out in the house. And that, like, so there's a process to building your dreams into reality and any dream can get built into reality and you could still do your job for 40 hours a week but if you're making art and then you sell your first piece and then you sell your second piece, all of a sudden you can be in a three to five year plan of having a gallery show and becoming a working artist. And I don't care. I helped my sister sell her first television show and it played in Canada of all cute places. Uh, it really did on Hulu in Canada. Like, no, it was on eight, whatever your ABC in Canada is. It was CBC? called Mother. I don't know. It was called Mother Up. It had 13 episodes. What? Right? Wow. It, really. And it was um, a cartoon about a mother, right? Who was like divorced. She was the worst mother. It was a very funny world. And uh, anyway, so it played in Canada. It was on Hulu in, in the United States. Anyway, she saw never written sold her show to Hulu and uh, she was 47. Hmm. And we started at, we actually started at 40 with her writing a column. It was her dream. My sister's dream was to be a writer and she had never done shit about it all the way to sold her show. Hmm. Right? So people don't understand it's simple actions. They're a big deal, but simple actions that then create a momentum. Uh, and then if you want to know where woo woo comes from, it comes from your subconscious and your ability to imagine what's possible. And then the world organizes around it, right? It really does. But it does not do it unless you're a badass and making shit happen as if you didn't need it. Hmm. Right? Does that make sense? Yes. Excellent.
<laughs> well, you said a lot of stuff there and you added a nice point at the end. For me, I say that it's like um, doing it with like, it's like the Zen principle of non-attachment. And so, you know, me working with athletes and stuff, you know, it's like, you're going to, sh- you're LeBron James, you're going to shoot the shot in to win the championship or whatever. Right. Yes. If, if you are fully attached and like your self-worth and everything you are on the is on the line you're gonna be real stressed out but if you like you're like you know what i know who i am i'm choosing to make this shot and like if it misses i'm still gonna be okay like i'm okay but i want to make it it's a total different mindset it's like no matter what goal you set for yourself it's not there yet so it's more like the process and so if you can do it with non-attachment it's like you make it and then the rest isn't up to you you can work towards another goal but if it's that goal and achieving it then it then there's always just these things these little carrots you got to go get it's it's a different way to um process things yes what you're talking about so fundamentally, I think is really important because we're talking about um, internal dialogue, but yeah. really it's all like freedom. That's yeah. like, a, a, that's literally the basis of being a free human being or, yeah. you know, woke or awakened or whatever. It's just like, Aww. it's making that choice between, you know, one of them is freedom is like, the world is making me do this and I have no choice and I'm just getting by and yep. the river's going and holy shit, hold on. Right. Yep. The other way is still like, holy shit, hold on. But like, I'm going to steer this way. And these are the things that, you know, I'm choosing to do. Like the body starts to show up. Like, you know, when I wanted to um, snowboard, I was like, you know what, the most, what I want to do most is snowboard every single day. So I went to Whistler, I got a job as a snowboard instructor. And then the next year, um, I had to work less. So I snowboarded on my own. And then the third year, I was just coaching people I wanted to coach. It was like that linear thing over time. Yeah. So you got to do it over time. And it's the same thing. I think that the younger generation, they don't give it themselves enough time or a vision that compels them. But fundamentally, you're talking about freedom. And I think that's, well, that's it. I think that the inner dialogue hates sucking at things. Yeah. And, and so the most truthful thing for a kid to face is that they can't get good at anything unless they're willing to suck at it. Mm. And so someone who has children, right? My kids like being good at things or better than others instantly. And if they're not, they want to quit immediately. And so that part of the human condition, like we're so immature, brats, that goes under brat, right? We only want to be good at something versus learn how to be great at something, right? So that's a very fucked up truth about all of us, right? Like it was very, I took up painting like in the last five to seven years, okay? Okay. And it was hysterical that I took up painting because what I realized is the reason I could take up painting is because I could give a shit about being successful as a painter. I didn't need to make it. I didn't need anybody to like it. I didn't need, I already was successful. I didn't need to care. And I didn't, and that's when I got the disturbing truth. Like, oh, I only like being good at things because I'm going to be judged by myself or others in my own fantasy. And the only way to really love something too is if you don't give a shit. Bummer, right? Like the amount of things I won't let myself learn because I want to only be good at it is so pathetic Mm. of human versus Mm. really go for experiencing snowboarding and sucking or anything like anything windsurfing and sucking and whatever there are so many things we will never do because we a fear right but really what's the fear about <coughs> sucking yeah yeah okay so let's let's go into this then because this is a this is a good um segue so we're afraid of things but it's also judgment I think it's fear of failure is a big one, but then judging. So you got the close knit things like your family, right? you got to be a doctor. you got to be a lawyer. you got to be an engineer. What the hell are you doing following your dreams? Like that's right. real close to you. So you're going to yes. probably do that. And you're like, I can't do it because of this. Then you got your friends and then they have a belief set that you're around. And then you've got culture and society and all the way out. So how do you help people who... Uh, or what, what do you recommend for like just getting negative feedback? Matt, your podcast sucks and your beard looks like there's birds that live in it. So the, in your life, the people that are there really are your witnesses. 
and they are chosen. And one of the things I have found when I coach anyone is that I am shocked at that people have a round table of assholes that are still allowed to be at their witness table. People can be dead and at their wit, like who you're still, like there's the teacher that yelled at you the one time that's still in your head judging and evaluating you, right? So, so one is there really is your round table and who belongs at your round table and who should get fired from your round table in your own mind. Okay, ha, 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 yes, you have one too. I have one, we all have them. Next is um, actual people in your life. There really are who are your judges that you want to be your judge. About love, about career, about looks, about anything that you, like you'll tell me the truth and you're my five people, two people. All my people have to be those, right? Like, so you need to vote on your community. So community is a, an area out of the 12, your friends and community. There really is community at large, and then there really are your people, your friends. And most people don't do the homework that they need to do to find out if they have the right community of friends and make sure that they have best friends that they really freaking love versus people they've loved since I was in high school. Yes, but he's cheating on his wife. What do you really think of that? No, you don't say anything. Do you really tolerate that? Oh, you always drink when you're with him. Oh, like, so people tolerate in the name of loyalty versus upgrade their level of development when it comes to friends, when it comes to lots of things. And that witness round table, does that make sense? Like, the, like I just covered that whole area. Yeah. So, okay, good. So what people really need to do is have a vision, a dream for their friends and community. The people I hang with are the best people on earth. I respect them. I love them. They inspire me. They're ambitious. They rock me. They help me. I help them. We play together. We play hard. We play clean. And it's good fucking people that blow my mind. I want 10 of them. I have none. I need 10. Okay, I'm going to get two this year, right? Right, so then, so a long time ago, I, I had to dump all my friends. When I was 28, I dumped all my friends. I'm not kidding. I, I had a revelation that I was a liar in a lot of different ways and that I was around liars in a lot of different ways, around their families, around the who. And so what I do is I go and get rid, I go tell everybody, I'm done listening to your lies. I'm done tolerating this. You want to be friends? Are you going to tell? Or are you dumping me because I dumped you? And then I really said, and I called it like Noah's Ark. I called it boat people. Who's on, who's on your boat in life are the only people you get. You can't do anything about your parents and your family. As a matter of fact, those are God given in quotes, right? Um, make those the best relationships you can. Like do your best. Those are from, like those are satana. They are spiritual destiny. You are meant to be with those people. Honor the people that are First, like your brother, sister, parents. You want to go throw cousins in there, you knock yourself out. They're not on my list. <laughs> but your community, your fam, your friends, those are who you pick to do life with and time with. And I think that is incredibly important. Yeah. I yeah. Totally agree. There's so, there's so many people that talk about that. They'll say like you're a result of the five people you're around. And I like the, and this is, I guarantee not the first time anyone's heard this. If it is like, it's important. Um, I don't, but there's a reason for it, right? Like uh, one of the smartest things that I think that I've done in my life is that when I want to learn something, I immerse myself in who I believe is the best at it or as close as I can get. And so that okay. way, that's what the discussion is. That's what people are living. They're full of integrity. You know, if I'm going to learn woodworking, I'm going to go to the oldest man oh, who woodworks. Go to my husband. Yeah, you know, and he's done it like 50 years or whatever. I'm like, whoa, you really know a lot about wood. You're going to learn. And then you're around a woodworking community. And then you will learn it so fast and they will help you learn it. It doesn't matter what it is. And that's so true. when the boat analogy is really good because – 
if you think about like your life and your five people or your group of friends and you're on that boat and shit goes down, you either got to wake up and this person's beside you talking crap, not supporting your dreams, not helping you, super negative. They can't pick up after themselves in life, you know, so you're cleaning up after them, you're doing their dishes, you're, you're fishing, you're giving them food. You know, it's not bad, but it's just like you're choosing that. Or you can have somebody that's just like fishing. They're so supportive. It's, they're always it's positive. Bad. To get it's bad. It's that was, bad. That was, well, they're, no, they're, no, that was, oh, oh, I they're caught not, nice. They're, they're nice. not bad. They're not nice. bad. Nice. nice. It's nice. Oh, oh yeah, my Canadians nice. They're not they're not bad people, but it's you're you're choosing that em- environment. They can they can do what they want, but you I didn't yes, we don't have to call them a murderer. <laughs> yes, this is, nice. this is the New York Canadian difference right now. <laughs> you want um, them on your boat or you want them off your boat? Exactly. You, you want them off your boat. Yes. Thank you. you. you yeah, of course. Of there. course. Oh yeah. You eject them off the boat and you insert them with who you want and who is supportive and that will change your entire life. Ready for this? Yep. It also teaches the person that got kicked off the boat to buck the fuck up. Hmm. So what happens is, is because no one's telling the brutal truth about everything, everyone is like, she's cheating on you. He had three drinks. I heard him say he didn't even drink. Like, because everyone is lying for each other, making excuses for each other, covering up for each other. No, those people never actually learn the right lessons either. So mm. the, the whole notion of lying to protect people or protect people's feelings is the worst of all. Because the reason you learn something is because you got hurt it screwed you. You stuck your finger on fire. Ow! Right? You never do that again. If you're repeating some lesson over and over again, you didn't get hurt enough in the nicest way I can say that because that's not that nice. Right. Yep. (laughs) I agree. I agree. And then that kind of follows up too to like the environment. Like you do the best you can with what you have. Like if you live at, you know, you're outside of New York and some land or whatever the case you're doing. But if you're right in New York, yeah. Um, you could go to the bar every single day. You could go to the part that just does cocaine all the time. You can go oh. to the part that um, goes to fancy swanky clubs and you dress up real cool and you drive up and you talk about yeah. whatever you do. You can go to yoga studios. You can go to meditation places. You can go to art studios. And then as you start to move towards the things you like, you're going to find different community. And this is like a kind of like a law of attraction reference, but like, you know, you're the one creating your reality for sure. So when you put your body in a yoga studio or you put your body in the wrong part of town, you're going to get different results from your environment. That's just common sense, but you showed up there. And so when you start to show up in different spaces and intentionally create your reality, how you want, I want to do more art. You show up at art. Now you have art friends. It's common friggin' sense. But then the ones that aren't there on that page will either you're going to find common ground through honesty and truth and understanding of each other, or they're going to fall off and you're going to find another friend in a different way. Yes. The most people, because the the most important ingredient for everything you're talking about right now, which would really be helpful uh, or what I'm making people do all the time, it's the ingredient of gumption, Mm -hmm. like the willingness to go somewhere where you know nobody, the willingness to Mm -hmm. talk to three people, the willingness to say hello, right? Like, and actually make friends, right? That's, that's my, you know, that's the big, the biggest problem is people will not stick their neck out and they're scared for whatever reason they've come up with and they don't know how to make new friends. They don't know how to go play in new environments. Like what you have is a willingness, you, your curiosity and your charm, right? Get you willing to go anywhere where other people are chicken ships and don't know they have it. So I have an answer for anyone who's home thinking they're a chicken ship and don't have this kind of charm or my kind of chutzpah, right? <laughs> we'll give charm to Canada and chutzpah to New York. <laughs> it's, it's pretty much the same thing and gumption to everyone else. Um, what you should do is you should go take an improv class where you know no one right? Mm -hmm. Go take an improv class. Um, They literally make you bark like a dog. 
Like it's the stupidest, easiest exercises, but it gets you out of your head and way more comfortable speaking to anyone at any time at all times. Right. And I have been doing this for 20 years. And so anyone who's a coward about meeting people and changing places, that's what they should do. Okay. Can we make sure we take care of that person? Yeah. And that's a really good point because my cousin is this <laughs> hilarious guy, he does improv, he does these skits, things like that. But that's come up several times. I just had like these world public speakers come on and they started to do improv because they're afraid. It's the best thing for sure. It's like, it's like a consciousness biohack, that process. It really is. Actually, you know? yeah. they'll even, it really, because it's the first time that you, in order to get it right, you can't be in your head because you'll get it wrong. So your head, which likes to be right, has to do it right. And then how to do it right is to be in the moment. And then the minute you start developing a skill to be in the moment, it's actually a skill, like covering your mouth when you sneeze. Like, oh, you do that. The minute you get you do that or why you do that, it happens from then on. So it goes right into this position. So if you're awkward and you call yourself shy or you're weird with women, weird with men, weird anywhere, fucking do the hack, people. Yep. And do it, do, and then do it twice, right? Do the class twice. You'll make friends. It's so goofy. It's cute. It's cheap. It's no big deal. Yeah. Uh, yeah. hundred percent agree. And it does all these subtle things. I think we could do a podcast on just like how many subtle things it'll do. But like one of the first ones that comes to my mind is like, you know, a lot of people, they don't want to fail. So they prepare and they don't want to put themselves in that situation. But the only, you're not going to know what's going to happen. And so you're forced to be very present and then also learn to fail. And then realizing failing like isn't the worst thing. It's a part <laughs> of the process, right? And so right. as you, you start to get okay with stumbling over yourself and finding your ground, you know, it's like when we move towards our dreams, we start as a baby gazelle, okay? You don't know what the hell you're doing. But over time, you'll figure it out. That's, nobody gets that, oh, I'm going to do this, bam, done. I, I have never interviewed or I'm aware of anybody who has done that. And yeah. so it helps you get more comfortable with that. Um, and, and it's such a wonderful hack. So the one way that I wanted to um, go with this that I haven't touched on is fear. We're kind of talking about that a little bit. You say face your fears. Well, it's, again, it's that internal dialogue. I'm not going right. to do this because I'm afraid. Like what if you've got a couple of kids, right? And you're the husband or wife and you're the breadwinner and you know, you're over here from New York talking smack about living your passion. And my wife is like, where are you going to make the money, bud? I agree. You know, we got three kids. You going to play for the hockey? Or what, you, what do you do in New York? So how do we face those fears or just fear in general? Because it's that's not, the thing. That's it's not a business. It's, it's every plant. So I, so I say you have three voices going on in, your, in you at all times. Like I have many voices. You have to read the book. In order to get your whole inner dialogue understood and how it runs and is connected, Okay, so just park that it's a lot more complicated, but explainable. Got it. Now I'm going to say three voices that are always going on. You have your head, you have your heart, and you have your hoo-ha. They do not agree with each other. They actually fight for dominance. They are assholes with each other, and they do not, they want to like discount the other. They want to team up against one. They like, they don't understand 300%. Like uh, this gets a hundred, this gets a hundred and that gets a hundred. I swear to God, they think there's only a hundred percent between the three. And so they're fighting for dominance. Okay. 300%. No matter what, which means your head which cares about how much money you're making. Can you pay for the kids, the mortgage, the like saving money? That's fucking brilliant shit. Don't you forget your head ever. That gets you on the bus with your phone, your wallet, the token, and reminds you to call home. Yeah, you need one of those. Your heart. <gasps> I love it. I want to talk to you. I want to kiss you. I want to see you. Oh, that was different. The heart can want to kiss it. There's a hoo-ha. Okay, but forget it. We'll, we'll take it out just for the case of making it clear. Your heart wants to know what you really think, what you really feel, what you're really sad about, what it reminds you of, what that smell 
made you think of what like oh my god my heart wants to play wants to tickle wants to charm wants you to be happy wants me to be happy wants all people to do the right thing uh-huh thump 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 right it beats crazy and believes in everything heart hoo-ha right it has taste it thinks there's things that are cool it wants to be cool to itself it wants to get laid it wants to be impressed it's a bit of a star fucker it kind of likes things it's like it's got it's you know it doesn't necessarily have all the brains or the heart but it definitely thinks they're sexy in the world cool in the world and it matters and it gets turned on and it has a lot of flavor passion Okay, head, heart, and hoo-ha. When you want to make a career change, and you, it's a big deal, and it changes money, right? It doesn't just work, right? You can't just quit your job. You're not, your head would scream bloody murder. It, the head says, well, we make $250,000 now. We could start saving money. You could then, once you can make a hundred, once you could change your job and get a job where you're not a vice president anymore, you're down to a managing director, but at least it's in the field you really like. And you went down to 120 and you got your wife to get a job where she does blah, blah, blah accounting because she really can do bookkeeping. If she would add 20 hours a week to that, I can then transition. Then that transition leads me in three years. I can promise everybody that I will get up to manager because I will kick ass. And I will like, so the head, the heart, and the hoo-ha have to come up with a plan over time to make real transitions possible. But boom boom it I have been doing it for 20 years. What do you mean, Lauren? I mean, really, right? Like someone in one industry left that industry for another. Someone who wasn't making money making music is now making money making music. No, really, a lot of money. You can have any dream possible. It just takes work and planning and time and consideration of head, heart, and hoo-ha. But um, boom. How'd I do? Yeah, it's great. It's su- it, you know what? It's painfully practical. You know, you just I want uh, where where is the woo woo law of attraction? I just think about it and then it manifests. That's what I want to do this without any effort. Where is that? Okay, just ju- just check. Okay, um, I believe. So let me tell a story. Okay, it's so cute. Here, soft, Ray, I'll tell soft you. Soft start. It's a very cute story. All right. So you know how I said I started painting? Mm. I loved my paintings, like I started painting. And um, I, uh, this past year, so it's six years later, okay? Six years later, I've been painting, I make gifts for people, I'm a gifting society, I paint all different kinds of things, right? I even have a website now because people love my shit that I'm painting, no shit they do. Well, guess what happened? A la manifesting style. I got a contract with Bed Bath & Beyond. Oh, you've heard of them? Um, Where they licensed 50 of my paintings. And I delivered them this summer before I went to Burning Man. Now, my dream in my, like in all my painting fantasy is totally, I get to do all my work. I get to paint, I get to paint clothing. I have a fashion line. I have like in my dreaming of while I'm painting, I am in a state of fantasy, love, manifesting, manifestual, right? Fervor, passion. I don't give a shit. I'm not attached to it. But you're like, Lauren, how's your career going in your painting world? I'm like, after I did all the work where I didn't do it, like, luckily, I went and painted. I bought paint. I paint. I got good at it. I cared. I made gifts. I did Like, I was not doing it for some big game, though I could have been. Um, this past year, I got, I can't even tell you how much woo-woo magic is happening with my, their dots, I dot. I, I, and isn't it funny? I connect dots. I make dotted things. 
<laughs> That's it. Well, you That's know, it. does that make sense? So I teach people to do all the work first and to have an incredible amount of integrity about the, the, their, their work. And then after you have the integrity, like the basics, you have the entitlement, you deserve to live in the highest state of the dream, which is spiritual, soul, and mission-based, like came to fulfill on this mission. And then when you're there, you're high as a kite, no, you don't need any drug. Uh-uh. <laughs> Uh uh-uh. uh. It reminds you of doing drugs, but it doesn't need other. Yep. And then and then in that state, magic happens and miracles that you can't predict or even understand how they happen will happen. So that's how I get a woman who's dating, 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 got her body to where she wanted, got her clothes together, got she was going to date like a crazy person because she wants to get married and have a family and she's 36 and she's scared out of her wits right? She's not going to have that guy. And so she's dating, dating, dating. And then because she has so much integrity in what she's doing and telling the truth and looking for the right guy, then she bumps into him on the plane. Hi. Bam. You're like, is that how it happens? I'm like, yes, actually, I think that's how it happens. An incredible amount of integrity that doesn't require woo-woo and brings the woo-woo. Yeah. Hey. That's it. Well, it, it's kind of like you're, and that's kind of the thing that I've had to really touch on for, you know, in my coaching and if I'm doing talks or something, because the woo-woo is very prevalent and I love it. I've been into it since a kid. Martial arts has it in there. It's, it's spirit. It's what is that unseen force that is connected to everything. I freaking love it and yeah. I'm in it and I want to know what's possible because when it happens, just at Burning Man, I love that like the um, I wrote an article on like trying to explain, um, playa magic. Cause it doesn't make any sense. It's way too freaking random and it just happens. You know what I mean? It happens You're like what? And it's so good that you know that something is outside of you, but you need to put the work in. And this is what I'm seeing in like, you know, someone's like, Oh, how do we do flow state and biohack? Yeah. They want, they want the pill. Wait, you want to hear the coolest burning man story from this yeah. past year? Ready? Yep. yep. 7.30 in the morning, I'm having my coffee. I don't start coaching at Burning Man till 12. So I'm really active in the morning. I'm a morning person, love to go get my coffee. Okay, so I have my coffee and I'm sitting my kids there. My 16 year old came, but like I imagine I'm with a gang. Ready? I have an idea. Let's do the alphabet game of which bands are most prevalent in which letter? Like who wins? Is it the A's, the B's, the C's? So we're all just kind of screaming bands and breaking out into song, okay? Like we're just having fun coffee talk, right? In the morning. Okay, we realize, I realize that A's are not doing so well, right? Like, and out of my mouth at 7.30 a.m. pops Alan Parsons. Now, I want you to know I can't sing one of his songs. I'm, we're like, you know when you're like raking your brain for anything? I don't even know if it's a musician. Ready? Cut to 11 o'clock at night. Craig and I, one of my best friends and I are, there's a moon installation on the playa somewhere. And there's also a full moon out that night. So we are chasing the moon and we don't know if we're chasing the installation or chasing the moon. <laughs> we get to the back fence. Everybody figure it out? We were chasing the real moon. Okay? It was hysterical. We were howling. It was such a nice night, right? We get off our bikes. We start walking to go see what's back there and where we are. What do we bump into? An Alan Parsons concert. <laughs> I don't know where the conversation came from. I don't know why I thought of it. I don't know why I said Alan Parsons, but I do know that we bumped the fuck into Alan Parsons at 11 o'clock at night on the playa. Someone explain what that was. You mean that kind of magic? Yeah, that happened. So we call it Alan Parsons magic from now on. When a premonition happens <laughs> that you couldn't have foreseen that takes you for a ride and is shockingly in the cards and you were played. <laughs>
not it was played, you were played. Yeah, that's ridiculous. And it, see, it's like those stories that are so random. And it's interesting how like Burning Man has so many. And I, like, everyone you talk to, even if they don't believe in it, they've got one or two of those stories. And they're as ridiculous as that. And I think that in the regular, let's say default world or however you want to say it, like just day-to-day life, there's a little bit more time. And so when you spoke about like, I use visualization, like visualization is magic. The mental game is magic that people don't use like law of attraction, internal dialogue, visualizing what you want to happen. It's mandatory for extreme sports athletes and an elite level athlete. Can I, can I tell you something to just as a tip for you to understand about it? Sure. I, and we'll see if you know it or not. Okay. But here's my favorite tip for smarty pantses like us. <laughs> um, you imprint at night. You meet your subconscious at night. What's making everything happen is the subconscious. Consciousness and subconscious meet when you sleep. What you should do before you go to bed is have whatever vision you're cooking up fall to sleep at night with you so that it's literally imprinting at night. And then what you will find is if you go to pee in the middle of the night, right? You will actually be in like, stop thinking you're dreaming and start thinking you're meeting your subconscious, like lose the dream shit unless it's really good and understand that's where conscious and subconscious hang and start imprinting and having conversations and making magic happen right at the boundary, at the border. Did you know that? Yeah, I make, uh, for years, I've had- Okay, uh, good. uh, That is not common. uh, Yeah, I make a hypnosis. I I write out, uh, you make it, it's so simple, but so when I go- Before bed? Yeah. So then I'm just, because if I just visualize it, I can't go as deep, but if I make a little recording of the things that I want, I just go into the imagination state, Um, and just see all those things that I want to see and feel it. And and yeah, but that, that's brilliant. And you know what? So you should do that. You're doing it for money. You am I, what do you mean? Am I doing it for money? You have, you make all the money you want to make in my dream or right now, right now. No, (laughs) I'm working on that. That's a, that's a new part of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Send me what you're visualizing. Okay. (laughs) Okay, cool. Yeah. That's well, that's, I'm actually got three months in Nelson to solve it. I think the last years have been like traveling around the world and it's, it's like, okay, I'm going to go here. It's, I get the money and then I explode it traveling and researching and then I get the money and then I explode it traveling and researching. So we're going to fix that coming up. But what I want to say is, listening listening to that at night and then in the morning either journaling about your ideal life which i think you should write it down or listening to again and then you're in this constant feedback loop of what that thing is and in extreme sports you have to have it um but you know i think the point i was making originally about the woo woo is like people are stuck in just visualization and no action where you need that logist uh, logical planning action dedication work And when you do those things, uh, whether it's sport or life, you enter naturally into flow state, your highest self, and then crazy stuff like you can't explain finding your life partner, finding this job that you were like out of nowhere from something. It requires that, um, you know, that action piece with the beliefs, understanding your internal dialogue, allowing it to come in and visualization. And now you're, you're cooking with fire. Huh? True, True that. Okay. (laughs) <laughs> through that, through that. Yes, but you can always tell how you're doing subconsciously, consciously by trailing your inner dialogue about the country, about money, about your life, about people, about women, about your family. Like what you're really saying, you cannot hide from. You can hide from, but you can't. Like it, 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 you cannot make it disappear. You actually have to do the work on it, which is really where I enter the picture or you enter the picture. That's awesome. I totally agree. Woohoo! Okay. So we've been crushing like an hour and a half of just amazing conversation. <laughs> what I want to ask, and first of all, is you can speak on anything for as long as you want, because this has been dope, but I wanted to ask you at least this question. What do you think, um, as far as, you know, a lot of people in the world that say the world's going to shit. Some people say it's, it's amazing. What would you like to offer 
like the world maybe as far as belief systems or anything that you think would positively impact the world? Like what things um, like, like maybe, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to ask. Like I'd say sometimes like a belief system, something like, um, you know, what would people need to believe? Or it could be even like technologies or anything. How do we improve this world and move towards? Stop lying. Um, if you really look at what's going on in the world, Mm-hmm. And you look at Donald Trump in my world and you look at men getting outed and everything that's coming to fruition in creepy ways. In, it's, it's all lying. People are protecting, managing, lying and, and lying about lying and vices in the dark world, right? So it's time to out yourself. Like it's time to. So the world is, I don't know. It's, it's pretty, I think it's pretty much hitting bottom. Right, and that the the revolution for women, for society, is is based in truth. I've never been more important and in teaching integrity and in teaching people to tell the truth. And just so you know, I'm still failing miserably about getting people to tell the truth. People still do not want to tell the truth in their own life, and then all they see are all the ways the world's lying. And so if you want to look out at what's wrong, I promise you it's the level the human condition is on the inside. It's mirroring. It's not like, oh, how'd that happen? Right? It's, oh, that's why it's happening. And then do something about it, obviously. Do it in your own backyard, in your own home, in your own little life. Right? You do it in your little life, you then will. Your friends will change. Like your little life first. (laughs) Get the oxygen on your face first. And then it'll naturally keep growing and growing and growing and growing and growing, right? So if it was up to me, I would eradicate lying on earth, lying about everything. What you ate, sex, drugs, to your children, to anyone and anything about anything you've been through. People are going to the grave with secrets. Those are lies, right? People are not sharing themselves and they wonder why they feel disconnected. Uh connect no that's my thing that. for the world that's a good one i agree that's a <laughs> solid solid I, yeah and you know and i think that there's a lot of like subtle lies and i just I just imagine just society in general and even like just i kind of imagine the masks you know all these masks like about our like our feelings and what we're doing and just stuffing it down and oh. yeah integrity is massive thanks for teaching that yeah so is there anything that you wish that I had asked you or anything that you want to talk about? No, this is good. Okay. So what do you want to leave the listeners with then? Um, that if they took the time to listen to this whole thing, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, then you, then you must want, then you must have a dream and you must, you, there's something that you need to, here's the thing I like to leave people with. The one promise you're not going to keep that you wish you'd keep. I don't give a shit about the ones you're going to keep. I give a shit about the one you wish you'd keep that you won't, that you're scared of. And, it, and what I'd like you to do is get it in your head right now. Who are you going to tell something to? What are you going to promise yourself? What, who are you going to break up with? What are you, like, what's the one thing that if you did that, it would change your life forever? What? I can always find a person's one thing. And so, and it's always sitting right there. So that's what I would like to leave everybody with. The one thing that would radically change their life. Come on, figure it out. Just one. Tell someone, promise it. Push yourself off an edge of, uh, and that's called fear, right? Push. I love it. Yep. And if you can't think of one, confess a lie you haven't told. To anyone. I don't even care if you just turn to the person on the bus. I lied to my husband for three years. <laughs> really? What'd you lie about? I was fucking the guy in the... I was bad. I got over it. I feel terrible. I'm okay now. It's an intense one. What do you want? You, <laughs> have you met the human race? It's true. It is true. They do not rate their lies are not rated PG, honey. This is true. R and X. 
And then this, not to digress, but then this goes into like guilt and shame, you know, and that's, uh, I was, I can't remember her name right now, uh, Kim Fisk. And she did like the underlying lie that drives us and it, guilt and shame are like the, the thing, you know, that's like running us from all these like little lies that we're telling, little lies, big lies, things like that. So lack of integrity. So then you lie and then you're living in guilt and shame. Then you hate yourself. You don't have self-worth. So then you, you're not finding your dream. It's kind of this, yeah. like- The minute- uh, the minute, so the, one of the things I teach is the way a person can create reality. If you, if you smell something, it must be real. If you taste something, it must be real. If you see something, it must be real, right? These things make something real, right? If I, watch this one. If I can't tell you something, if I can't tell you what I'm thinking of you, if I can't tell you why I'm hurt, if I can't tell you you did something wrong, if I, right, it must be true. We create reality by making secrets. Hmm. If I can't tell you I don't like your shirt, it must mean because your shirt's ugly. The minute I can't tell you I don't like your beard, I like your beard, right? But if I can't tell you I don't like your beard, right, I'm looking at that I'm right. That's why I'm keeping the secret. It creates reality by not saying it. And we believe it's important or I'm going to hurt your feeling. It like creates an entire scenario. The way we manage our information creates reality and it makes me a me and you a you. It puts us both in a box. Oh, I never say anything mean to someone. Who said it was mean? Why can't you say that? Who said that? Right? Oh, I don't want to hurt your feelings. I must be right that that beard is ugly. Right? Like, what? So now you're a guy with crunchy and I'm a girl who's sweet and we just postured the shit out of each other and I didn't even do anything except smile. <laughs> See how that's like, so managing information, withholding information is how we create reality in our head and fix ourselves into particular ways and fix other people into particular ways. And none of it has been consented to consciously like oh i really did do that i didn't even ask what do you think is it true for you do you want to know none of it you know i could keep going for days we should shut me up put me out of my like well, put me well, down man. It's, a, it's a good it's a good example of just how we create these worlds and judgments and comparisons and all the craziness that happens in our minds just from you know the simple interactions that we have and so i dig it really very fascinating how much mm -hmm. we live in our heads. So, how, yeah. Well, you can go ahead. Well, I was just going to no. say, make sure, <laughs> make sure people know where to um, find you. And you have like an inner you. I think you guys sent me like some sort of link. A I am sure there's a link for you to put on your world. So if anyone wants to buy inner you and be part of our cute community for the rest of you, like a beautiful growing community where you get everything. And every time it gets upgraded, you'll get upgraded or Is it whatever. Like innerU.com. I, I looked yes. at the course curriculum yeah. and it looks really in depth, uh, really yeah. thorough. And uh, I'll probably be taking it. I, I'm going through like four courses right now. Um, but I love, you know, like it, it, you have experience, you know, 20 years look, and that's what it takes. You have yeah. to have experience. You have to have yeah. people, you have to have feedback. Um, and I yeah. love learning. So wait it looks till the really March. Intense. We're we're upgrading everything in March. Okay. Wait till the March one. Do the March one. It'll kick your cute ass and we have it what if you, what do people want to know will they get the upgrade no, no, no. they will get it's beautiful now there is okay. nothing wrong with what's now now it took <laughs> it took me years to make the one that you will listen to but i just rebooted i'm the new ones coming out in march it's the same price right like it's the, so if you buy it now it, you can not listen to it till march and get the new one in march or you can listen to it now and also get the new one in march so it's Got available it. it's i do not change prices and i don't make you pay for the upgrade oh nice yeah i think okay the code is zen athlete 75 i think so yeah. check it out i'm sure it's awesome um but yeah i appreciate that and we'll definitely stay in touch um what's what's the website they go to handel group h-a-n-d-e-l group g-r-o-u-p dot com right the same education that goes into mit stanford graduate school of business NYU, yep. it's pretty impressive. Keep going, some, yep. That's impressive. Yes, Yale, 
we've been at Harvard. We're, we're at, like, yes, I want it. Well, my dream is to reach the highest level so that when I bring like I can bring it to inner city schools, like close that gap. Yes. Close that gap. That's what I want to do as an athlete, bring this mental training into sports because kids are learning it anyways. Yes. Same thing. That's Good exactly job. beautiful. Kids. Yeah. Help kids. They're not all messed up yet. We can still design their minds. Yeah, we got to get to everybody, but you take yours. I'll take mine. We'll get to like everybody get. get everybody, every, everybody can do it. It's just the adults have to choose, right? They can't, they don't come over until they want to, you know what I mean? They've got the, everything's reality is how it is. And they need like some sort of thing to want to come over where a kid we're like, you know, we don't have to, we don't have to say oh, you know they're saying? malleable. They're, yeah. easy. they're very easy. They really are. It's true. Yeah. You're right. Get them young. Yeah. It's true. Yeah. yeah. And adults too, but they got to choose I, I have to, you know, I, I care about grownups. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. And no, it's amazing. And you know this from like working with people, it doesn't matter how old you are, 30, 40, 50, 60, it's the same crap from when you're a kid. You go, you it, go through it everybody's the same kind of, you know? So I was, I, I think I, I overstand what you're saying. It's true. Right. Yeah. Cool. Yes. Well, this has been a, a privilege and a pleasure. I appreciate you and your work. Um, your you. no bullshit attitude to <laughs> helping people. Fellow burner is always amazing. Um, but uh, I'm just grateful for you. I'm excited to check out your book. And I just thank you for your time and, and sharing and creating all this stuff and having uh, a mission with personal integrity that you're willing to dedicate to help others. It's beautiful. Yeah. Thank you. Very welcome. All right. Well, see you later. Thanks for listening. Bye. Peace. Bye. See ya. Bye.